God's throne. So he trusted, just imagine, getting beat and scourged and saying, how could there be joy awaiting me from this? Torment and torture. He believed what the Father was telling him. And he endured it. Now, how can I put that into today? When you go to work today and they say, we can't use you anymore. Or somebody comes in and, you know, does something that really aggravates you. How do you endure that if you don't have any endurance? Or do you, how do you do that without snapping at people and telling people how you feel and an eye for an eye and all that? If you don't have any endurance to withstand what the Bible tells you. You come here, you learn the Word of God, but are you using it when the time comes to use it? That goes when you do really trust God in that moment when somebody's coming at you or saying something that hurts you. And you say, I'm going to leave it in God's hand. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to go pray for them. Amen. Right? That's a mature faith. You say, I'm going to trust God in this. And let me tell you something. Trusting God is way better than trusting yourself. Amen. Let me tell you something. You might not get instant results, but in the long run, you'll always benefit from trusting God. Amen. Then revert back to your own ways. Amen? Amen. All right, so let's go to let's go to the record place. Let's go to Jeremiah 35. Maybe we can finish this up tonight. Then we're going to get into another study of uh, a scripture, or maybe before. Okay, let's go to Jeremiah 35. Is everybody there? Mm -hmm. All right, let me get there. Okay. The Rechabites. I don't know about you, but I, I can learn a lot from the Rechabites. How about you? Yes. Obviously, he was trying to give what his nation an example of how to live by what they believed, right? Okay. Give me a second here. There we go. The faithful Rechabites, verse 1. I'm going to read right down it. This is the message the Lord gave Jeremiah. Jeremiah was what? One of God's prophets. Okay? Spoke directly to Jeremiah. Now if somebody tells you there's a prophet living right now, get away from him. All the prophecies are fulfilled. The Bible's from Genesis to Revelation. Everything's revealed that God's going to reveal. There's no more prophets for Revelation. Okay? No more. They're done. The prophecies are all fulfilled. That's why when somebody says they're a prophet, yeah, they're not a prophet from God, okay? They're a prophet from Satan. If you know your Bible, that's why we know our Bible. We know that the prophets are already fulfilled. The scriptures are all written. So don't let that trip you up. There's people that say they have these, Jesus talks to them and they're getting revelations from God and telling you know, the world's going to end. You, you see all that stuff that goes on. Yeah. People actually believe it. It's because they don't know the Word of God. Yeah. Look, nobody knows when. Only God knows the time. Yeah. This is the message the Lord gave Jeremiah when Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was king of Judah. Go to the settlement where the families of the Rechabites live and invite them to the Lord's temple. Take them to one of the inner rooms and offer them some wine. So I went to see Jezaniah, son of Jeremiah, and his grandson of Habazaniah, all his brothers and sons, representing all the Rechabite families. I took them to the temple and went into the room assigned to the sons of Hanan, son of Igdala, man of God, a man of God. This room was located next to the one used by the temple officials, directly above the room, Masiah, son of Shalom, the temple gatekeeper. I set cups and jugs of wine before them and invited them to have a drink. But they refused. Now, what, when you get tempted, okay, do you set yourself up? Or when you get tempted, do you uh, refuse? You know, I'm sorry. I can't do that. No. Why? Well, because I, it's not good for me and I, and I live for the Lord. So I don't do it. Do you see the example they're trying to make here? They would not do it. 
They were in God's house. They were in the temple saying, you know, hey, it's all right to have a drink. Look who we are. The prophets are offering us something. They said no. They said no. Look what it says. But they refused. No, they said, we don't drink wine. Why? Because our ancestor Jehonadab, son of Rick, gave us this command. You and your descendants must never drink wine. They, gave, they listened to what he said. So they didn't do it. Are you listening to what God says when the tempter comes and you have the ability to say no? That's what the examples are. That's what it's written for. You are going to get tempted. And temptations come from what? Our own desires. Amen. That lead us away and drag us into sin. Remember in James? Don't blame the devil for your temptations. Right. Temptations come from our own lusts and desires. Amen. And just remember one thing. The devil doesn't make us do anything. We can blame the devil for a lot of things, but we carry out the temptation. If we fulfill it, we make the choice to do it. Amen. Remember back in the, in the garden? Yeah. The devil made me eat the fruit. Eat mm -hmm. Then when he went to Adam, the woman that you gave me made me eat it. Mm -hmm. Ever since then, we've been passing the buck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why did you yell at me? Well, because you yelled at me. <laughs> Justifying why we did it. Well, if you weren't like that to me, I wouldn't be like that to you. Well, wait a minute. I said, didn't I just read in 1 Corinthians that the temptations in your life, God will give you a way out of it exactly. if you can, so you can endure it? Obviously, He's putting you in the temptation so you can get stronger to resist it. Amen. He's building your resistance through the temptations. But when you fall into it, you do not build your resistance. You weaken it, and then you weaken your faith. Sin weakens our faith. Amen. When we fall into temptation and we fulfill something in our lustful state, it weakens our faith. It doesn't strengthen it. But when you resist it, you know, we're not perfect, but you know that time when you do resist it, it makes you stronger. Amen. So is temptation ever going away? No. no. Is traffic ever going away? No. Is rude, obnoxious people going away? No. no. Are unbelieving Christians going to be in church? Is, is the devil's people in church? Yes. yes. Not everyone that comes to church is a believer. Amen. That's a fact. There's people that come into church to sow seeds of discord and make people divide and find things wrong with church. That's what they do. That's not unity. That's division. And that's from who? Satan. Satan uses Christians to divide. Everybody thinks, well, they go to church. They must be saved. Where's that in the Bible? Going to church doesn't make you saved. Believing in Jesus Christ makes you saved. Not going to church. There's people that never step foot in a church that believe in Jesus that are going to heaven. Amen. And there's people that come to church all the time that don't believe that ain't. You're going to be surprised who you see mm -hmm. and who you don't. Mm -hmm. Because, remember Jesus? Remember, Ju remember Judas? He was with them all the way. Playing the whole trip out. Yep. And selling him out the whole trip. Yep. Okay? Who was he? He was walking with the Lord. So don't think that people that come to church and walk with the Lord are all from God. The only thing that's going to give you that is discernment. What comes out of their mouth and how they act shows you who they belong to. You will know my people by their walk, by your fruit, by their actions. Are we getting this so far? Yeah. Look, I'm not going to give you a bunch of baloney when you come here. I'm going to give you reality. You can be sitting next to somebody that comes to church that doesn't believe in Jesus. They believe in their own ways. And they're not really believers. They're deceivers. Because Jesus said the wheat and the weeds, the sheep and the goats are going to come together. Don't uproot the weeds because you pull up the wheat. You see? Because you don't know. Why is he saying that? Because you're not really sure who is and who's not. It's not for you to judge. That's God's job. Mm -hmm. You hope they're saved. You know when someone passes away? Oh, I know they're going to heaven. Really? Do you know why? I didn't know you were God. Amen. 
I didn't know you knew they were going to heaven. How do you know what they if they're going? Only God sees the heart. You don't see their heart. Right. That's right. You don't know. You hope that they are. Amen. Just because they come to church and read the Bible does not mean they're saved. There's, there's Bible scholars, there's people that teach the Word of God that don't believe the book. And it's all it is is a book. Amen. There's theology courses that people teach that are not believers. Yeah. They teach it in school all the time. They're not believers, they just teach it. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. I'm trying to be real with you people. Amen. This is real. There's a lot of deception out there. Yes, sir. Look, the Bible says, Jesus says, the shepherd will die for the sheep. A hired hand will run when the sheep get in, tempt, you know, get in trouble. Now look what it says. We have never drank wine to this day and not have our wives or sons or daughters. Oh no, wait, I'm sorry, let me back up. We don't drink wine because, our, and, and you and your descendants must never drink wine. And do not build houses or plant crops or vineyards. He told them exactly why he, they wouldn't do it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now when somebody comes up to you and you say no, and they ask you why, do you tell them why? Or are you just afraid to tell them why? I have a master. His name is Jesus. And Amen. he tells me that's not good for me. Amen. So I'm not going to do it. You can, it's alright to mention him. Because they <laughs> mention what makes them happy. They tell you what they do all the time. right? People that don't believe tell you exactly what they do. There's no reason why you can't tell them exactly what you do. It's actually an open door. You say, hey, I used to do that too, but I found a better way. <laughs> you don't have to say anything after that. You don't have to say, oh, yeah. Why don't you tell me what the better way is? There you go. Now there's an open door. No, now they want to know. The no. Now look what it says. Plant crops of vineyard, but always live in tents. It says, if you follow these commands, you will live long, good lives in the land. So they believe that. They believe that if they followed them commands, they want to live good, long lives in the land, so they obeyed it. They believed it, and they trusted what he said. Get it? Do you believe and trust what the Bible says so you can live a good, long life down here and obey it? That's the whole thing. Do you trust God enough? That's the example he was trying to say. Now look what it says. <clears throat> but when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon attacked this country, we were afraid of the Babylonian Syrian army, so we decided to move to Jerusalem. See, they were living on the outskirts. They didn't want to live in the city, because you know what the city's like, right? Full of temptation and alluring. You ever go like, like I don't know, I've been to Vermont, right? And I'm like, woods. <laughs> There's really nothing to tap me. You know, this is woods. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's not somebody driving by in a beautiful car. Oh, that's a nice car. Or somebody, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Somebody from the big city. It's always an allurement. The big city. Go to New York. Go to Vegas. Every, 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 every temptation you want is there. No. Go to a bar. Everything's there. No. You know. No. So they don't go there. Do you know that? So I don't go there. I know that. I don't go there. No. I know what tempts me. I know how bad I love my, my things my flesh love. I have to stay away from them. No. I'm not going to go set, throw myself into a temptation. No. That's crazy. I'm not. But if you don't know what, what tempts you, you jump in it all the time and you get burned. Because, you know, just like a frog, you throw it in the cold water and you turn up the heat a little bit at a time, he'll just boil. He won't ever jump out of there. Your conscience is just like your guide. If, you don't, if, you, if your conscience is not awakened, it won't warn you of danger. You see that little... Eh, eh, eh? Yeah. If you keep sinning, that it goes away. Amen. And then you get comfortable in your sins. Mm -hmm. Bad place to be. Amen. Oh, I'm safe. 
Yeah? As by fire. Yep. I don't know about you, but I didn't go through all this so I could just get saved by fire. Mm -hmm. I want a, a fruitful life now. How about you? Amen. Now look what it says. This is what, look at, verse, look at verse 13. This is what the Lord of heaven army, the God of Israel says. Go and say to the people in Judah and Jerusalem, come and learn a lesson about how to obey me. See it? Come and learn a lesson on how to obey me. Perfect example of their obeying what they believe. Now is that hold true to the church? Say absolutely. If you really believe something, you will obey it. So that just shows you that I have an unbelief because I don't, I'm disobedient. Disobedience equals unbelief. Belief equals obedience. You see? It does, it's not, you can't take it away. You, you're, you're obeying because you believe what God's saying is true and it's going to help you. Amen. So you obey it. When he says, love your enemies. <sighs> All right. I'm going to love my enemies. I really hate them. God knows your heart. Amen. God knows your heart. You can say, yeah, I love my enemies, but you really hate them in your heart, so it's useless. It's a changed heart. It's a new heart. The very heart of God. You realize that each one of us has the heart of God? I have the heart of God. Every believer that believes in Jesus Christ has the heart of God and the ability to love their enemies. To be obedient, because God says, I have given you everything you need to live a godly life down here. Amen. Everything. Amen. And I'm saying, every time I fail, I thank the Lord Amen. for His matchless grace and tender hearted mercy. But I don't use it as an excuse to keep doing it. Amen. I use it as a reason to stop. Because He loves me that much. Amen. Amen. You see? You don't use God's grace to keep sinning. You use God's grace so you can have the power not to. Where sin abounded, grace much more abounded. Grace is more powerful than sin. Amen. Amen. So you don't sin in grace. Mm -hmm. No, you sin less because of grace. You understand that your human condition. That I'm just weak at times. But I'm not going to say, yeah, look, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. <laughs> Come on, baby, let's go party it up. <laughs> this is what people, people think that's what it means. Ignorance, lack of knowledge of what the Word of God says. You think God saved you so you can keep partying and, and, having, and, and living a sinful life? Really? Why didn't Jesus have to go to the cross? You were doing a fine job before that. Amen. You didn't need Him for that. You needed Him to stop. Amen. And you still need Him to stop every day, no? I don't know about you, but I gotta get on my knees all the time because I am so powerless over my sin nature. Amen. My sin nature is so powerful. But guess what? I have someone who loves me that's way more powerful than my sin nature. The Bible tells me. I don't feel it. It tells me that. I feel that my sin nature is stronger than that. But the fact of the matter is that it's not. That's why we don't go off our feelings. You know when you get that temptation, you feel like it's never going to go away till you fulfill it. But the Bible says, I'm going to give you a way out if you, so you can endure it. If you trust me and don't fall into it. Amen? Amen. Alright. So being obedient, is that a law or a choice? Choice. Yeah. Before you came to Christ, you had no choice but to be disobedient. Because you didn't have the power of the Holy Spirit overcoming the flesh. Now that you have that, you have the power to become obedient. Amen. Whether you choose to or not is up to you. Don't you wish sometimes God would just take control of you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lord, please, just grab me. Yeah. Control me. I want you to control me, please. Amen. Don't give me a choice. I, don't, I make the wrong one. <laughs> right? Yep. But learning the Bible and studying in His Word and fellowship with another gives us the ability to make the right choices. We never, God never takes away our free will choice, so don't blame God when you make the wrong one. Amen. And 
then you say, how can God let that happen? Yeah, we hear it all the time. How can God let that happen? How can you ask a question like that if you know that you have a free will choice? If you understand that. If you understand what the Bible says, and you say, how can God let that happen? Because you have free will. So God, will, you have a choice to do the right or do the wrong. As you know, people do wrong out there, right? And so do Christians. But we have the ability to do right too. Amen. How about, thank God that I can do the right thing. Thank God that I'm not always looking at the darkness. I can see light. Amen. You can wake up and look out in the world and see misery. And I hate this. Let's sell this. Let's go there. I hate my life. I hate... And I'm like, wait a minute. That means you hate God. Because He's the one who gave you life. If you hate everything that's in your life, that means you hate God because He's the one who put it there. Ooh. If you can't say amen, say ouch. It's okay to say ouch. God's got band-aids. <laughs> He heals our wounds. But don't think that we're not going to get wounded on this journey. Amen. <laughs> That's where people that come to Christianity get tripped up. Oh, just believe in Jesus. Your life's going to get so much better. You're going to go, everything's going to be good. And then their life falls to hell. They say, what are they talking about? Mm -hmm. They told me that everything was going to be good. Why is everything getting worse? Because you were deceived and you were taught the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. You were taught a feel-good message instead of a reality message. God works way beyond our feelings, and that's what He's doing. To be honest with you, when, he's, when you work in your life, He's taking you way, behind, way beyond what you feel and just walking by faith. Amen. I feel like saying this, and I feel like doing that, and I don't feel like going to work, and I don't feel like talking to them people. <laughs> I don't feel like saying anything today. Well, then, then you don't have to. If you're going off your fears, God says, you know, there's an opportunity to get somebody into heaven. Go pray for them. But I don't feel like it. I don't like them. They burnt me. Be Jonah. What happened to him when God sent him? He said, you go to the Ninevites. And offer them salvation. Tell them they're going to get judged if they don't turn. I ain't going to them. I hate them. They skinned our people alive and killed many. And he went the other way, right? God said, oh, no, no, no. You're not going that way. He put them in the belly of a fish and spit them out. After three days. And what did, Jonah, what did um, Jonah say? All right, Lord, I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many times do we go in the opposite direction? <laughs> All right? Don't be judging Jonah. No. Right? Because when that person's in front of you that God wants you to help and you don't, that's just like what Jonah did. Because you don't like them. I mean, God doesn't call us to help people that we like. He told us to help the lost and dying world, the haters. Amen. And the tax collectors and the